Hello everyone, my name is Chris Edwards. I go by the nickname CypherCat and in this video what we're going to be doing is taking Windows 2016 server and turning it into a NAT enabled router which can also distribute DHCP addresses and serve as a DNS server. And what I'm going to demonstrate is that we can connect to uh, Windows 10 machines to it and not only will they be able to pull DHCP or IP addresses uh, by means of the door process, they'll also be able to use the Windows server as a D, uh, DNS server. So it's pretty interesting. Of course, this is very bare bones, but um, it's interesting to see how Windows Server 2016 can be used to do this sort of thing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a network <clears throat> on this subnet right here 192.168.0.0 and we're using a CIDR of 29 because I figured six machines would be enough um, anyway it was just it was kind of arbitrary but I didn't just want to go with uh, a CIDR of 24 anyway our Windows 2016 our Windows Server 2016 machine is going to have this IP address right here which it's also going to serve as the default gateway for these two machines right here and we're going to settle this up on Windows Server 2016 and then demonstrate that it works. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, what I want to show here is our network setup as it exists in VirtualBox. First, I've got this Windows 2016 server, and it's just a plain vanilla, plain vanilla Windows 2016 server. It's just freshly installed with no changes or anything uh, being uh, carried out on it. Then we've got two Windows 10 VMs, and these are just clones of each other, but they're going to function differently in that they'll be connected to different, um, they'll have different IP addresses, they'll function independently. What I want to show here is what I've done as far as the network setup. And for Windows 10, it says Windows 10 Vidya, but for Windows 10 Vidya and Windows 10 Vidya clone, I've given them their own internal network, and that internal network. Um, that's the only connection they have. That's so they can connect to um, the internal network that um, the Windows Server 2016 system is on. So they'll be able to communicate with the Windows uh, 2016 system, which is attached to NAT, which gives it basically, it shares the internet connection on my machine. So Windows Server 2016 is gonna be communicating with the internet like a router and Windows 10 and Windows 10 clone are going to be communicating with uh, the Windows server. So that's the network setup. Um, we're going to assign manually assign a D or manually assign an IP address to uh, the Windows Server 2016, and then kind of take it from there. So let's let's continue. So what we have here, we've got Windows Server 2016 running, and it's a vanilla install. So let's let's get started here. Go ahead, send control, delete. Put in the good old admin password. First thing we're gonna set up on this is remote access. Uh, remote access is, um, <clears throat> is what gives other machines the ability to connect to this machine. Uh, we Basically, I don't know the technicalities of it. I just know that it's required to get this thing running as a, a router. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to add roles and features. And I always like skipping this. All right, so we're gonna go down here and install remote access. All right. Um, <clears throat> while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and install DHCP server. This is what you're gonna need to get DHCP working on this system. So we've got um, our remote access and our DHCP server. That's what you need to make an initial setup where the computers can communicate with the internet, but they can't use domain names. They can't use fully qualified domain names because they can only um, communicate using IP addresses, which is what I'm going to demonstrate after we install this. So that's all we have to do there. We um, Oh, and routing. Routing is the last thing we want to install. So you install the remote access role, install the DHCP role, and then when you go to role services, click on routing, and that'll make it so this thing can function as a router. All right. And then you just go through the defaults and then we install. So this stuff will install and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so we've got 
<clears throat> we've got DHCP installed and we've got remote access and routing installed. First thing we're going to do is set this thing up as a router. And this is how we do that. I've, every so often I'll get these errors that show up here, but what, what uh, mitigates that, I just restart the system. As long as you do these steps, <clears throat> you'll get the machine, the server in a state to where it functions as a router. So we go down here to tools and routing and remote access. What we want to do here is configure and enable routing and remote access. We come up with this wizard. We want to choose network address translation. Okay, there we go. Uh, sometimes this happens. I get this empty screen here. Um, let's see, cancel it out. And then it pops up. So sometimes it seems like it pops right up. Uh, other times I have to go back. Uh, sometimes I restart the system, but in all cases, I get to this screen where I have my two interface adapters. Now, one of the interface adapters was is the LAN adapter. As I showed at the beginning, there is an interface set up that's just completely internal, and it's the network that the two Windows machines are gonna be on. This right here is the connection to the internet, and this is the one that we want to select as our NAT internet connection. All right, so now, after this, we'll have a NAT internet connection. After this, machines will be able to connect and get, uh, they'll be able to connect to the internet. But first, we gotta make sure that they can get um, their DHCP information, IP address, default gateway, all that good stuff. So, um, and then sometimes I'll get this error right here. I, I just click OK or whatever to get through it. Sometimes it doesn't show up, but in the end, the same thing happens. I'm able to go here to DHCP, which is in tools. And this is where we're going to set up our IP address scope. And we're going to use that subnet that I showed at the beginning of the video with that particular configuration. We're going to use that, uh, that CIDR and um, that address space. All right, so here we go in the, we're in the DHCP section. So what we want to do here is set up a new scope for IPv4 and also you have to drop it down for some reason. Oh, well, love Windows. Anyway, we got to set up our new scope here and our scope, we're just going to call it LAN. And the start IP address is going to be 192.168.0.2 because 0.1 is reserved for the router. And the end address is going to be 192.168.0.6, which would be the last address available in this particular uh, subnet. Since you have 196.0.0 on up to um, <clears throat> on up to seven, zero being the network address and uh, seven being the broadcast address. So let's set our CIDR up to 29. It gives us a nice little subnet mask. We have no exclusions, so we just skip that. Least duration is fine there. Um, and look, we do want to configure a couple of DHCP options. All right, we want to specify the router. This is the default gateway that's going to be sent out when the machines make their DHCP request. 192.168.0.1 for this machine. All right, and not worried about that. Not worried about wins. And yes, we want to activate the scope. So let's finish that. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that the machines that connect, they get their IP addresses from that scope we just set up and they're able to ping 8.8.8.8, um, which is uh, the Google DNS um, server. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. Okay, so what we have here are the two Windows VMs running that are on that particular network, the one that's connected to the Windows 2016 server. I'm going to demonstrate that they both have their IP address information and that they're able to ping 8.8.8.8. So here we go. We go here to IP config. And as you can see, this one has 192.168.0.2 with a default gateway of the machine, the Windows 2016 server, and a subnet mask of slash 29 or CIDR of 29. Go over here to this machine and it should have dot three as its IP address. 
And here we can see that it has that IP address. It's got the uh, slash 29 subnet mask, slash 29 cider, and it's got the default gateway of the Windows 2016 machine. And here we go. They can also ping the internet. There we go. However, uh, let's demonstrate on this machine as well. Let's go ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. All right, there. The only thing they can't do is use um, domain names because they have, there's no DNS server. So that's what we're going to configure next. We've got our machines with IP addresses. They can use DHCP and um, our Windows 2016 machine works as a router. So let's make our Windows 26 mach 2016 machine work as a DNS server as well. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so we've got our VMs running. Here's our Windows 2016 server. One note I want to add is that when I set up the DNS server, I don't know much about the technicalities behind it. All I know is that once you go through this configuration, the VMs that route through this uh, through this Windows 2016 machine are able to use um, fully qualified domain names, and they're able to access web pages and things. This whole operation is set up really as kind of an instru instructional thing and experiment just to see if you can make something happen. I just thought it was a cool idea to set up a Windows 2016 machine as a router and give it the ability to do DHCP as well as DNS. So let's carry on here. We want to add the DNS role to our Windows 2016 machine. So we just go down here to DNS server click add features, go to next, just accept everything that comes with it and install it. Nothing doing. And when that installs, we'll, we'll come back to it. Okay, so we've got DNS installed on this Windows machine. Now we want to set it up so that the machines that connect to it can get DNS info, or they can access hosts on the internet using fully qualified domain names. We simply go here, configure a DNS server, click next, and this is what I go with, create a forward lookup zone. DNS can be a complicated thing, but our end goal of making it so that these machines can use fully qualified domain names, this is the option that we want to use. Okay, I just go, an ISP maintains the zone, um, I just use local for the zone name and again there's a lot more to this but the method I'm using works to get it up and running at least and we're going to use Google as the master server and here we've got this forwarding uh, screen and again I just use uh, Google's DNS server right. and we finish that and then that's pretty much it. Once you do that, your machine should be able to access, uh, be able to actually reach hosts on the internet. And there we have it. Now we can ping google.com. Furthermore, we can actually go on the web and access web pages. For instance, we'll go here and go to Google or Bing or something. Let's see, google.com. Go to google.com and bam. There we go, it's bringing up Google.com. So now what we've seen in this is that we can indeed set up a Windows 2016 machine as a router, a DHCP server, and a DNS server. From there, I don't know what you could do with that, but it's an interesting experiment nonetheless to see how you can use Windows 2016 for these things, especially the routing part of it. Anyway, thank you for sticking along with this video, and I hope you, you know, got some nice takeaways from this.